This video is a collection of days that we're going to have here. What I'm doing here is the kids wanted the rest of the sourdough waffles I had made a few days ago and they wanted them on this morning for breakfast. So what I do when I have leftovers when I make waffles is I put them in a bag and then stick them in the freezer. So I took them out the freezer and I'm just sticking them in the oven on the tray in the oven for a little while on low to get them nice and warmed up and then that's what they're going to have for breakfast. And now I am working on mixing up some homemade hot chocolate mix. So for this mix, it is two cups of milk powder and I do get the A2A2 whole milk from Azure Standard and then one cup of cocoa powder. And so I'm putting these in this strainer here so I can sift them basically and make sure there's no lumps because sometimes the cocoa powder can be a little lumpy. And so it does help me mix them together a little bit better and it does help me make sure there's no lumps because I don't want any lumps in this mixture. I want it nice and incorporated. So now I'm working on my sweetener. So it's two cups of whatever sweetener you would like to use. I did one cup of sucanate and I am going to have to grind it in my um, coffee bean grinder here because I want to make sure it's a nice powder. Sucanate is more of a, uh, a larger sugar, larger pieces, and because sucanate is just raw, dried um, cane syrup, is basically, or the cane juice, and so it has a higher amount of molasses in it, and it is larger pieces. So I do want to make sure it is ground up really fine into that powder so it mixes up in the mix really well. And I don't have to worry about mixing everything every time I want to just get a scoop of the hot cocoa mix. So this here, I'm measuring out one cup of maple sugar. So this is already in powdered form. It is very fine. I am going to put it through my strainer anyways, just to make sure there's no lumps. But I didn't have a problem with this mixing in. So... Um, here, Leela needs my help getting the jacket on. It's a very cool day <laughs> on this day. So anyways, any sweetener you would like, you would do two cups of that sweetener. So I did one cup of sucanate, one cup of maple sugar. If you are used to store-bought, packaged hot chocolate mix that has all the bad stuff in it, um, I would probably recommend, and you want to try sucanate, I would recommend one cup sucanate, one cup of um, organic cane sugar, or if you're not ready for soaking it quite yet, then just do the two cups of cane sugar and it will still be really good. You might put it through a strainer first and see if you have any big pieces, whatever big pieces you have. Maybe try to blend those up somehow, get them a little smaller, and it should mix up just fine. And then it'll be um, one eighth teaspoon of salt, just have a pinch of salt in there. And then I make sure that I whisk it really good because I don't want any pockets of the milk powder, no pockets of just sugar or just cocoa powder. I want it incorporated really, really, really good. So when I get a scoop of that mix and it's just one fourth cup scoop whenever you want to make um, eight ounces of hot cocoa. But whenever I get that one fourth cup, I want to make sure that everything is mixed up the way it's supposed to be. So this recipe does make a very full, I mean tippy top full, quart jar of mix and whenever you want to make a cup of hot cocoa I heat my water up in the kettle on the stove I get one fourth cup mix in each cup and then I put eight ounces of water in each cup now I'm doing water because it does have the milk powder in it and I'm just reconstituting that milk powder if you want it a little thicker or even have even more of a nutritional value you can do eight ounces of milk and just have an even more um, milk base to it. So now we are moving on to the banana muffins. This is, of course, a different day. And um, we had plenty of bananas to go through. And so the ones that were going bad, I wanted to make muffins with. And um, when we were sick, the kids were wanting some bananas one day. So I did a curbside pickup with bananas. And there was a huge... <laughs> misunderstanding or miscommunication and I ordered 10 bananas and no joke I ended up with almost 100 bananas <laughs> so they had plenty of bananas to enjoy and we have plenty of bananas that uh, we froze and I made some several batches of muffins with some so I mashed up one and a half cups or three bananas and now I'm adding 
my sweetener, you can use whatever sweetener you like. I did all of my sweetener is Sucanit, um, but you can do one fourth cup or 55 grams of brown sugar and half cup or 100 grams of ca regular cane sugar. Uh, that's what the recipe actually calls for. I did both sugars with Sucanit. Sucanit you can use as a brown sugar because it does have that high amount of molasses in it like brown sugar does. Or you can use it as a regular cane sugar. So you can do it for both. And so I did 100% uh, Sucanit and it came out absolutely fantastic with that higher amount of molasses in it. So then I'm doing two large eggs or medium size to large eggs. These are eggs from our chickens, so it's however they come out is the eggs that I use. <laughs> and I am so excited, too, that our younger chickens finally started laying this month. And so um, I'm just really excited about finally getting some more eggs. So then I just want to make sure that all of this is mixed up really good. And uh, there's no pieces of eggs. There's no big pieces of souk in it. There's no big pieces of banana. If I do have any big pieces, I am going to try and mash it up a little bit better at this point. And here in the red bowl, this is the butter I had melted. I melted it on low in the oven while I was getting everything mixed up and then it was ready to be used. That is a half cup of butter or 113 grams of butter. Then for the flour, it is one and a half cups or 180 grams of flour, one teaspoon baking powder, one teaspoon baking soda, one teaspoon cinnamon, I did a heaping teaspoon, and then it is one teaspoon of vanilla extract. I used vanilla bean powder, and so I actually did half a teaspoon of vanilla, uh, but if you use vanilla extract, it will be one teaspoon. And then one fourth teaspoon of salt is what I used. I use salted butter, so if you don't, ha if you're not using salted butter, you might want to try half a teaspoon. But you can start at one fourth teaspoon if you want, and then if you know next time you think it needed a little bit more, then just add a little bit more. So I mix all of that up really well, and then I'm lining my um, muffin pans with the it's a non-bleach parchment paper muffin. And um, I do everything non-bleach, non-bleach, especially when you're working with sourdough stuff too. Everything's non-bleach in our house and um, our, all the water that we use is, is double filtered. We have a whole house water filter system and we have a Berkey that it goes through after <laughs> it goes through the whole house. So I'm going to fill these up three-fourths of the way. And then if any look a little lower than the others, once I get to the bottom of this I'll be scraping the bowl and then just top it off but you do want to fill it up about three-fourths of the way not not at the tippy top but you know th three-fourths is probably good so about like that so I have my oven preheating at 425 degrees Fahrenheit and I'm gonna have them in the oven at that temperature for five minutes that high temperature for that short of span is gonna help those muffins puff up really good and give you that nice muffin top after five minutes, I'm going to be lowering the temperature to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and they're going to continue to bake for 15 minutes. After the 15 minutes is up, I'm going to take them out. I'm going to leave them in the muffin tins, and they're going to cool for a few minutes. I would say about, I don't know, anywhere between five and seven minutes in the muffin tins, and then I transfer them over to the cooling rack. And these are very easy, very soft, very delicious banana muffins. So now on this day, we, um, we were going to be having a lot of rain coming. And so the chicken, the area that we have the chickens in, I usually have wood chips and pine straw and leaves, just all kinds of stuff that they like to scratch in. And it helps with, you know, with their pooping and everything. It gets all mixed and goes back down to the ground. Um, when we have rain or things get wet, there are some places that like to puddle and they don't like their feet wet. They don't like to get wet. And so having that layer instead of just bare ground, it's healthier for them. It keeps them drier. It's just a better environment. And all of that that I have had, on, had in that area is broken down now. It's not completely gone, but a lot of it is pretty broken down. So I couldn't get to pine straw on this day. I thought I was going to be able to find some, but we couldn't really find any good piles of pine straw. So we are raking leaves, and this is back behind the house. 
uh, we're watching Callie here, the younger cat. She climbed halfway up that big tree trunk that's right there, and she was hollering at us. She does get down just fine on her own. Once she realized that we were ignoring her, she uh, stopped hollering and just got down. But we are collecting leaves, and we're going to be putting these in the chicken area because we are going to have a lot of rain. And since we do have those uh, areas that like to puddle, and they don't really enjoy that, and it's cold outside, so we want to try to keep them dry. Um, we're going to bring them these leaves. I'm using my Gorilla cart here. This is my first round, and I do put um, each pile on the trees first, and then I spread it around other places and make piles, and the chickens spread it out themselves for me.